بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We always praise the Maker, the One who made us, the Almighty, the Nourisher, the Cherisher, the Sustainer, the Provider, the Protector, the Curer, the One in whose hands lies every aspect of our existence and entire existence. We send blessings and salutations upon all the messengers who had come to take us from darkness to show us the light. May the Almighty grant us the ability to tread upon that light. Amen. And we ask the Almighty to bless his companions, his household, and every one of us here, mashallah, and our offspring and humanity at large. My beloved brothers and sisters, I cannot believe that this has become a reality. I remember Brother Bashar speaking to me some time back and telling me, I'd like you to be a guest at one of our functions. And I said, inshallah, it will happen, but I'm not too sure when. And mashallah, he followed up and we continued until the day came when I'm standing here in front of you in Melbourne. May Allah accept it from us. Amen. I'm very honored to be a guest here this evening. And I feel that the Almighty has granted us the ability to meet. Nothing that happens, happens without the divine decision of the Almighty. People might think things are coincidental. They may be for us coincidental but for the almighty they're never coincidental my brothers and sisters primarily we realize we were made by the almighty we came into existence because the almighty made us he decided that he wants to have us here we did not decide that none of us chose to be on earth not one none of us chose to be here for example to be born where we were born None of us chose the parents we have. None of us chose the children that we have. In the case of those who have children, may the Almighty bless those who don't have children with children. I mean, my brothers and sisters, that itself already tells us that we are here on a mission. We're on earth on a mission. Why do I say it tells us this? Because when you have an examination, your questions are never chosen by you. If they were, it's not an examination. It's always someone else who decides to test you, to examine you by asking you things out of his will, not out of yours. The examiner is not you. If you were to examine yourself, that's not an examination. The Almighty chose, I'm going to create you. I'm going to put you in a place without your choice. I'm going to throw you into the deep end to see what you do. And part of the blessings of the Almighty is that he did not cause us to grow like trees, but rather to have families and to be given birth to. Had it not been the fact that we were given birth to perhaps the mercy of the mother would have never been felt. It would not be needed. But because for my existence, I depend, yes, on the maker. And after that, I depend on those around me initially to take care of me in such a way that later on, I will understand that I need to take care of others. I hope you get what I'm saying. Let me explain further. When I was born, I came to this world. Had it not been for those around me to take care of me, I would never have survived. Impossible. I couldn't eat on my own. I needed someone. And this is why the Almighty creates love automatically for a baby in the hearts of those who have even an iota of mercy, especially the mother, whose heart is usually normally filled with absolute love to the degree that as the mother gives birth, it's one of the most painful and difficult experiences, near death experience in the case of the majority. But once the child is there, the blessing is so great that even though I've been told by sisters, no, 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 we don't forget the pain. We know about the pain, but we tend to ignore it, right? Because before I used to say the pain is forgotten. They used to tell me, huh, have you given birth that you know about it? <laughs> you know, mashallah. 
So now I, re I, I decided I'm not going to say the pain is forgotten because it might not be, but even if it is not forgotten, it was worth it, right? It was worth it because you have a child, a bundle of joy, mashallah, crying and subhanallah, there is this love. You're so keen on, you know, letting the child suckle or letting the child feed and looking, you know, after the child, it might be stressful. It is stressful. The body has changed tremendously after nine months. Suddenly it's changed during the period of labor. And immediately after that, subhanallah, a lot of change sometimes results in a little bit of difficulty in terms of the mental stress, the physical stress. If you're not supported by an entire unit, it won't be so easy. And this is why a family unit is actually a blessing from the Almighty. Today, the world is drifting away from the family unit and teaching us that you know what you do it alone you don't need your mom you don't need your, your dad you don't need your brothers and sisters you don't need this and so on and guess what's happening we're becoming people who are not as content as we used to be we are becoming people who are searching for contentment in every place and in everything besides where contentment lies so the almighty has created us in a specific way do you know why? Like I said, initially, it's because he is the one who chose the test. You have your parents. You know, I get people who complain to me, my parents are very difficult. The first thing that comes to my mind is, well, that's part of the test of the Almighty. What are you going to do about it? Subhanallah. And that doesn't mean that I encourage parents to be difficult because it is also a test for you when the Almighty has blessed you with a child. You didn't choose the exact child that you got. The Almighty blessed you with a child he felt he wanted to give you. And so don't be so difficult, my beloved parents. Remember, the world is changing. It's part of your test to be polite, respectful, merciful, full of beautiful guidance, and at the same time realizing that as time passes, you will need to pass the baton to those children. You know, I've always said this and I want to say it again. When a child is born, almost all decisions are made by the parents, including the names you have, right? I have a name. I did not choose my name. Can I ask you by show of hands, who chose his or her own name at birth? Put up your hands. At birth, mashallah, you may have chosen it later on, right? But at birth, no, I don't think so. Unless your name is Meh. That was probably the cry that you had. Doesn't sound like English, does it? May Allah forgive us. We didn't choose. Later on, some people change their names for whatever reason. I know some who change their names later on. The Almighty's given parents that authority such that all issues are controlled by the parents at a certain stage. When the child wears clothes, those clothes are purchased by the parents. The parents decide what type of clothes they want to buy, right? When the toys are bought, initially the parents decide. The child cannot even speak. You're going to buy this toy, you're going to do it this way, and the, the child is excited, mashallah. Let the child grow a little bit older. Guess what happens? The Almighty is showing you that your test is to pass the baton. While the child is under you, you need to inculcate in the child the goodness. If you don't, you're going to lose out because as time passes, the child is no longer going to listen to you and there will come a stage when the child will probably be disagreeing with you. Is it wrong? It's not wrong to disagree with your parents respectfully where you feel that they are wrong. Respectfully, you discuss it, but it's wrong to be disrespectful. When the Quran speaks about parents, it emphasizes more on kindness and respect rather than obedience where the parents are wrong. If the term obedience is used in the Quran regarding parents, it's only used where the Almighty says when they're telling you to do something away from that which is correct, then don't obey them. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا The term ta'ah is only used in this verse where Allah is saying فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Don't obey an instruction that is against the command of Allah. 
If your parent is asking you to do something that Allah doesn't agree with at all, you excuse yourself. But Allah says, Subhanallah. فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا You will still be with them and live with them in goodness. In another place in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا The Almighty has declared that you will be kind to your parents. You will be kind to your parents. This kindness is not necessarily obedience. So getting back to my point, initially you have a say. As the child grows older, it will throw away the toys you bought for it and tell you, I don't want this. I want that. Nowadays at the age of two, I think, or maybe a little bit earlier, they will fight for your phone. And trust me, they know that the phone you've just given them is a dummy. That's how sharp they are, right? And they know not only that the phone you've now given them, which belongs to you, is yes, it's true. They know that it's a genuine phone. They will know that this thing opens with your face, your eyes, your fingers, and your passcode. And they will even learn the passcode as small as they are. But they cannot speak English or any language. Isn't that the Almighty telling us, showing us, son of Adam? Can I tell you what I learned? I think that the children of today are very sophisticated compared to what we were. You know, I'm a child of yesterday. And some of us seated here might be a child of perhaps the day before that, mashallah. <laughs> but it's all, it's all good, subhanallah, we, we're learning. What are you learning? The children are becoming sophisticated in being children, so you need to become sophisticated in being parents. You follow what I'm saying? The methods that my parents used to raise me, many of those methods are redundant because they were raising children for a world that no longer exists. You follow what I'm saying? So therefore, if I were to employ the exact methods in every sense of the term, I would not be able to raise these children in a correct way. I need to realize that the Almighty is taking this away from me quicker and sooner. You know, back in the day, it went beyond all the way to marriage. I'm sure in some cultures, parents used to say, Oh, my daughter, you know, you're of age. I found a very nice guy for you. Inshallah, you'll be getting married. And the daughter would be, Yo, wow, I'm excited, you know. Subhanallah, gone are those days. That's history. The age of the dinosaur. La ilaha illallah. Right? Today, your child will come to you and say, Dad, I met someone. La ilaha illallah. Right? <laughs> How do you process that information? The world has changed. At times, nowadays, our children meet people whom they would want to be spouses for themselves at workplaces or at colleges or elsewhere who would be better candidates for that particular post than anyone we would ever come across in our day-to-day -day lives. And yet, some parents are not prepared to even consider that. Look at how backward we've become. The children are sophisticated, but we, we are not as sophisticated in the upbringing of those children. So we have a problem with things that are not actually a problem. You follow what I'm saying? People are saying, well, I'm so scared. You know what? We're all in it together. Subhanallah. At times, your children nowadays will come up with ideas that are far beyond your imagination because they are probably within the technological age such that advancement they kept up with and we did not. If you were to ask me how we know each other here, I would tell you a lot of it, if not almost all of it, is connected to technology, right? Subhanallah. And here we are with much love, with much, subhanallah, so much of good feeling and so on. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it's our duty to raise these children, to become children with values, with morals, by watching us from an early age being fair, being balanced, being filled with values, morals. When you take care of the orphans and the children, when they see that you are participating in the drilling of wells and in building homes or develop it, development that's happening in the third world or wherever it is needed, when they watch you day and night, they will develop that without you even realizing.